Good evening. Adelaide's worst intersection, the Britannia Roundabout, is finally getting a long-awaited overhaul. But it involves drivers negotiating not one, but two roundabouts. Tom Richardson is there. And Tom, what's being proposed? Well, Kate, a second roundabout will be constructed just to the north of the existing one behind me. It's hoped that will alleviate congestion and reduce the frequent bingles we see at this notorious intersection. Now, the announcement precedes Thursday's budget, but at $3.2 million, unlike a lot of the cars that pass through here, it won't make much of a dent. Plenty of plans to fix Adelaide's worst intersection have gone around over the years. It's a disaster. Anybody that's travelled through this area knows that this is uh, an intersection you approach with fear and loathing. But the government's confident its solution runs rings around the rest. Not one Britannia roundabout, but two. The solution gives drivers more space and more time. A smaller intersection on the existing footprint for traffic coming from Fullerton and Kensington roads, with a second to be built around 40 metres along the Ketville Terrace for cars approaching from Wakefield Street. A simple, intelligent and cost-effective solution that does least violence to the natural environment in this area. Previous proposals would have seen dozens of trees raised. This one removes only five. Saved. In the past five years, there have been 308 crashes at the intersection, 48 of them involving casualties. That's not good enough. Our solution will deliver significant reductions in those crash numbers. There's quite a level of sophistication in terms of how it operates. It's not just a case of putting another roundabout at the end. And it costs a fraction of the once mooted underpass. Don't worry, I can do it for $3.2 million. Uh, you know, excuse me for being a little bit sceptical. Locals say it can't come soon enough. Desperately needed in this area. It's, uh, it's uh, five o'clock, it's absolutely chock-a-block here. Could be a stopgap measure. Look, who knows? If it's effective, then it's obviously a cost-effective solution. And transport authorities hope to begin construction within months and complete the work by the end of the year.